the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This, more, or this afternoon, we're here to, together to, to remember and to celebrate our sister, Susan Knutson. Susan is 61 years old. Um, she lived here in Prescott, and she died unexpectedly at her home on Wednesday, January 18th. Susan was born on March 26th of 1961 in Lanesboro, Minnesota, to Helen and Eugene Anderson. She graduated from Preston High in uh, Preston, Minnesota, and then attended Luther College in De Decorah, Iowa. On May 19th, 1984, she married John Knutson, the love of her life, and her best friend, with whom she shared life's greatest moments. She worked at kinder care for 33 and uh, a half years in Woodbury, serving nearly 10,000 children and families. Her center was a training center where she trained district leaders, regional vice presidents, and many of kinder care's center directors. Susan loved children and selflessly championed their needs. Her sincerity, passion, hugs, and love for people and for life in general was exhibited each day with her colleagues family, and friends. At kinder care, she formed lifelong friendships and enriched the lives of her employees as a leader, mentor, and friend. She drew much of her zeal for life from Joy Lutheran Church, where she was a devoted member of the bell choir. She was drawn to the camaraderie and enriched the group to such an extent that others joined because of her. Indeed, her infectious smile lightened any room, and she was very, very positive always looking on the sunny side of life. She loved to laugh, had a quick wit, enjoyed planning, had a passion for cooking and gardening, cherished the good life, and uh, always loved being with people. She was an avid Packer fan, which is probably enough to say about that. <laughs> Especially with so many of her Minnesota siblings, it sounds like. When Ben graduated from high school, all of Packer mem memorabilia was turned upside down or back backwards at his party. Um, and there are so many memories of Susan, memories that you'll hear about today and that you'll have an opportunity to share as well. Um, chicken pox, uh, siblings being late for the bus, 4-H um, fashion reviews. Um, she was a wonderful sister and a great friend, um, and she will be missed by very many. She loved her extended family, looked forward to getting together around campfires. She probably loved this gathering today with so many of you here and so many friends. She is survived by her husband, John, one son, Benjamin Kristen of, of Marion, Iowa, and two grandchildren, Rebecca and Hayden, a brother, Tom and Karen, three sisters, Gretchen and husband Richard, Catherine and husband Norman Wall and Carolyn, and husband Brian Hoff nine nieces and nephews. She was preceded in death by her grandparents, her parents, a brother, and a sister. This, this afternoon, we're here to remember and to give thanks for the many ways that she touched all of our lives and the lives of so many in this world. And so as we remember and we begin, we pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister, Susan, we thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all of your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. there to hear your born in cry I'll be there when you are old I remember 
rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there to hear your warning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. When you heard the wonder of the word, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. When you find someone to share your time, and you join your From dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young. I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. gently closes in and you shut your weary eyes I'll, I'll be there, there as I have always been with just one more surprise I was there to hear your Jesus was there at the very beginning when she was born. And uh, he was there throughout her life from beginning to end. He was there when she was baptized in Christ Jesus, buried with him into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, she too might live a new life. You too um, were blessed to be there for Susan and with Susan to enjoy her life um, at many different stages of her life. And um, there are several people that are going to be sharing with us today about their memories and uh, the blessing that Susan was in their lives. Um, uh, Michael and Norman will be sharing. So invite uh, Michael, I think, is going first. So. My name is uh, Michael Kwas, and I am uh, Kristen Knudsen's husband. Uh, Kristen is, is John's sister. Uh, that makes me Susie's 
co-brother-in-law or something <laughs> like that. And I'm humbled to say a few words about Susie this afternoon. Humbled because many of you know her much better than I did. And I can only offer a, a co-brother-in-law's perspective. I would like to sh share with you the earliest memory I have of, of Susie. It was in 1991, and we were at Grandma Jan's house, uh, John's mother, for some sort of celebration. There were lots of celebrations there. I was the new boyfriend, and I, uh, it was just a mess of dishes, and I, I offered to do them. Now, Jan's house had some really uh, hard water, so I was going to add some vinegar to the, uh, to the dish water. And so I grabbed this jug of vinegar, and right as I'm adding it, Susie walks into the kitchen and says, what are you doing? Uh, I explained myself to uh, uh, the somewhat suspicious uh, future co-sister-in-law, although I didn't know that at the time. And I was actually kind of mildly offended because I considered myself somewhat of a professional uh, being a dishwasher at that time in my life. Uh, anyway, we ended up doing the dishes together and we got to know one another. You get to know someone when you do the dishes together. And it was, for us, it was more like just hanging out. We became friends after that. And looking back, that was no surprise. That was Susie. Fast forward to the third week of January 2023, and I'm helping to draft her obituary. And I had the opportunity to read some of the testimonials that folks, you folks, wrote for her. And I was honored and, and humbled to read those. Honored because as I read, the voices of those who knew her were like a chorus singing the same melody in different octaves. I heard a song of a, of a person who was so much more than a teacher or a manager, but someone who was also a mentor and a friend. I heard a song of how she touched so many people, especially young people. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a teacher also, and, and the blessing of being a teacher is you do touch thousands of lives in ways that people don't, don't realize. Reading about her in those testimonials, I heard a song dressed in, in purple, uh, not the Minnesota Viking purple, I mean, the, she loved purple, and uh, with some beautiful, some beautiful notes, some tremendous notes that, that recalled Susie and the excitement she would belt out, especially when the Packers <laughs> scored. I just, I just learned that aspect about her in just a month ago. She, she glowed warmly, kind of like the light of one of those old-fashioned lampshades that the light that they give to a room. And this light, undoubtedly arising from her faith, would shine when she'd walk into our house on Thanksgiving or when she'd, she'd present us with those USA-themed snacks on the 4th of July. You, you know that, that light, it touched all of us. And, you know, that's no surprise. That was, that was Susie. Uh, reading these testimonials, I was also humbled because I didn't know the, the fullness and the, the richness of, of that side of her. Humbled because I thought maybe I, sh I should have. And we all have our, our regrets. I, I, I've known her for over 30 years, and she was part of some of my life's greatest, our life's greatest moments, my graduation from college, uh, our wedding, the birth of our kids, and those milestones that all the kids have growing up, uh, all of our Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Fourth of July celebrations. If we ever needed anything, she was, she was there. She treated my sons like they were her own. And we learned a lot about parenting from Susie. Every time we moved, she was there organizing our cupboards. And these... <laughs> And these are whirlwind, I mean, these are crazy time, whirlwind activities, you know. But every now and then, time would slow down, and she and I would have a moment to chat. 
like we did when we did the dishes way back when. And I wish I could have just another one of those. So when God calls someone unexpectedly like this, we, we wish for things, wish to have just one mo more moment. We think of what we could or should have said. And so when I was composing this, this eulogy at, at, at home, I find, found myself exclaiming, you know, it's like, Susie, you were just here, right, at this very table, yucking it up. And I could hear her respond, yeah, I'm sorry, that sucks. But what's the plan now? What's the plan now? And we all have to figure that out. I know that Susie would want us to grab the bull by the horns and, and to start living, even as we're grieving, living through people just like she did. We have to figure out to do, how to do that. There's no one way. I can hear Susie saying, yeah, whatever, do whatever works. She was so practical that way. But that's no surprise. That was, that was Susie. Indeed, she loved being around people. All of us here, I think this is when she was truly at peace on the road trips, chatting around the bonfire or playing with Rebecca and, and, and Hayden. She would just hang out. She, she'd just be there. She loved playing the bells for the church here. I had the honor of experiencing that one Christmas Eve, and I'm sure she didn't value the camaraderie the most. And in this, in being there for us, being with us, she fulfilled Christ's call for us to love one another. And that love was her light, and it is yours now to continue to sing as she sang to be a light as she was our light. That is Susie now. Most often it is true that people are the product of their life's experiences especially true of the formative and the early years. Susan Anderson was privileged to be born into a family with a loving and a fiercely protective mother and a father who nurtured everything, nurtured the land, nurtured his animals, and especially nurtured his family. Those two would sacrifice anything for their children. By the time Susie was born, she had to share that farm home with two parents, three sisters, and a brother. I would uh, like you to do the math with me on that. That would be seven people in that farm home. I would like you to do further math with me when I tell you that in that farm home, there was one bathroom. Seven people, five of them female, <laughs> with one sink, one bathtub, one toilet. Now, I think that her father escaped the bedlam of uh, that morass most every day because of his outside chores, daily, twice daily, all day long on the dairy farm. But I can't fathom the fate of that one poor brother But Tom is here today, and you can visit with him about that. <laughs> the family shared everything together, including space. Sometimes they would go on a day trip or off to a wedding together. All seven of them in an uh, uh, ordinary family sedan. Seven people, it's a good thing that seat belts were not common in sedans of that day or any car. Sometimes they would invite a guest with them on this trip. That would make eight in a car, all wedged together like sardines. Susie wedged into the very smallest space because she was the smallest of all of those people. And just as the car was ready to leave the farmstead, the door to the other house on the farm would open 
and out would come Grandma looking for a seat in the car, too. Nine people. It was Preston, Minnesota's version of a clown car. <laughs> but the more, the merrier. And when Susie was 12 years of age and Todd came along, that even added a baby to the mix. The family was dedicated to faith and the church. They didn't discuss on Saturdays as to whether or not they would attend church on Sunday. It was just expected. Of course, they would always be late to church by a few minutes, but they were the most faithful, week in and week out, year in and year out. Susie's faithfulness to the church has extended even to this fellowship of Joy Lutheran, and especially to the Bells. Thank you for being here to offer your gifts today. It was in that family closeness that Susie learned how to laugh, to love, and to serve others. In all the tributes that have been written in these recent days, all the stories told and the memories shared, there was this one consistent woman, a woman who loved, a woman who cared for others, a woman who tried to make life better for all the people around her wherever she went, family, school, church. There was never a question as to when Susie and John would enter into a building because the decibels, decibels of laughter would always increase exponentially and honest and great care was offered. Now, there were a few times in which gasps were offered as well, like when they wore their Green Bay Packard jackets to a Thanksgiving gathering, leather Green Bay Packard jackets, <laughs> matching leather Green Bay <laughs> Packard jackets. It is really quite amazing. It, 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 really only their natural charm that kept them from being thrown out of her, her loyal Minnesota Viking family's home. Truly great people dedicate their lives to others. Great people may dedicate their lives to family, to friends, to the church. And the greatest among us dedicate our lives to the most vulnerable and the smallest among us. What is it that causes a woman to use her entire working career to ensure that little ones are cared for and they might thrive in her presence? The extended Anderson family cannot thank you, John, enough for your love and care over a lifetime. You are such a cog in the family. The family is grateful for Ben and Christine and grandchildren. We cannot deeply enough express our sorrow at the loss you all are feeling and all of those of you who have loved Susie. But at the same time, we cannot adequately express the heights of our hope. The Bible says that there is a cloud of witnesses cheering us on in our race. Today, there is one more champion in the cheering section, perhaps ringing a bell, a special bell for a husband and a son and grandchildren and all whom she has loved. If we listen really closely, we may even now hear um, Susan ring a bell as our bells um, ring for her.
I know there's a lot of you here, and some of you probably haven't heard handbells before. Now this can be played soft, it can be played loud, but unless you're the parent of a beginning band or orchestra student, you're not gonna sit there and listen to this for 40 minutes. So handbells is a unique music media in the sense that all these players only have one or two notes, and this is not a song. So what we do is we create a lot of dinglings <laughs> that get together and decide to form a family. And that's how we make music. So the color is for Susan. And um, as luck would have it, this is our theme song. And Susan's note to start this piece. We're going to show you those notes just by playing them with the hand chimes. And then the rest of the piece comes together in bells. And you can see how a bunch of dinglings create beautiful music.
make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Reading from Psalm 100. The Holy Gospel for this day is from the 14th chapter of John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, there you may also. I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Beloved in the Lord, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's shocking. It's unbelievable. It's incomprehensible. Susan's very unexpected and sudden death has left us reeling, especially you, her family, and her many friends. So today we gather to celebrate her faith and her life, to console one another, and to hear words of consolation from Jesus himself. It is difficult to understand the death that brings us here today. Why? Why did Susan, still so young, at this particular time in her life, have to die? With plans to live closer to her family, closer to her grandchildren, especially, and with all the things in life that brought her joy still ripe for the picking, why now? Why? At a time like this, when sorrow, your sorrow, is overwhelming and there are no real satisfactory answers to why one so vibrant and full of life is gone, we turn to scripture. Jesus says to us, do not let your hearts be troubled. He spoke these words to his disciples over the last supper they shared, the night he died. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Now I wonder how the disciples reacted to that. If there was ever a dark night of the soul, a time to be troubled, that night was it. Jesus had been doing and saying such odd things. First, like the lowest of servants, he washed the feet of his friends, and then he predicted that one of, him, one of them would betray him that very night. And then he even sent Judas out to do the dirty deed. He told his friend Peter that before that night was over, he, Peter, would find himself denying that the two of them even knew each other. And on top of that, Jesus had been talking about his own death for days. It must have been pretty creepy. Indeed, life was about to cave in on all of them. And they would soon be separated by unjust arrest, by fear, power-hungry leaders, and then even by death. Their worst nightmare was about to become reality. I'm not sure that anyone would be considered normal if he or she were not troubled, even a little bit, hearing this kind of talk and seeing Jesus do such strange things. But Jesus meant what he said when he said, 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. He could see beyond the immediate situation to the whole purpose of his being on earth. He knew that he had come to rescue Susan and you and me and the rest of a lost and struggling humanity and get us all back to the God who so desperately loves us. It meant that he would suffer and die in the process, but he loves us so much that no cost was too great. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Sometimes, when I'm weeding my garden, I encounter this creeping stuff called bindweed. I don't know if you can see in the picture, but there's kind of a vine wrapped around a head of wheat. It wraps itself, it does have some flowers, some of it is pretty, but it wraps itself around everything in its path, sometimes so tightly that I would have to cut it off at the ground to save my plant from being destroyed. Annoying though it is, I've developed a kind of respect for bindweed because it makes me think of how the Spirit of God has bound us to Christ in baptism. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor anything else, nor powers, or height, or depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Susan was a woman of faith a baptized child of God, bound to Jesus in life and now also in death. Nothing on earth or in heaven can ever change that. Those beautiful words of Psalm 100 give us an image of God's people entering the Father's house with joy and thanksgiving and singing and praise. When I first read this psalm while I was preparing for today, I imagined Susan among that throng, dressed in some beautiful, probably purple, heavenly garments, celebrating the steadfast love of God that lasts forever. This is the place that Jesus said he was going to prepare, prepare a place for us. And if I go and prepare a place for you, he says, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you will be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And of course, Thomas says to him, Lord, we do not know where, are you, where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Susan did not need directions or GPS or a map to the Father's house, that holy place Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, reached out his hands and led her there throughout her life and now as she entered the Father's mansion of eternal life. I know Susan mainly through our time at Joyful Bells. This is a dear group of musicians, patient and encouraging to relative newcomers like me. Our rehearsals, are times of practice and counting, one, two, three, four, and hard work, but most of all, they are times of joy and laughter and learning. Now, one of the first techniques I learned when I joined Bell Choir a few years back was marked on the music with the letters LV. It means let vibrate or let ring is what we call it. Usually, we damp the bells after we play a note so that it clears the air for the next note to come so you can hear it clearly. But sometimes when we see the LV, we play the note and we let that bell continue to ring. I will think of Susan now. Every time I see LV on any music, because she is letting those heavenly bells ring on and on and on as she gives thanks and praise to God, but also because the effects of her integrity and joy and love and kindness will continue to ring always among us. 
She's already sorely missed among us bell ringers, as she is with all of you, her family, her friends, especially you, John and Ben, Christine, Rebecca, and Hayden, all her sisters, her brother, her nieces, nephews, friends, and colleagues. And she waits for us in that heavenly court. Do not let your hearts be troubled on this day. Indeed, there will be an empty place in your hearts, in your lives, for years to come. Grieve her passing, but do not let your hearts be troubled. For Susan is God's beloved child, and Jesus has taken her by the hand and led her through good times and bad, through joy and sorrow, through the loss of family members whom she loved and through the pleasure of being with all of you, her loved ones. And now he has led her safely into the Father's house at last. And it is the same place that is prepared for you, all of you, just as Jesus, the way and the truth and the life, held Susan's hand and led her into new life, he will lead you through all of life's joys and sorrows especially through the next days and weeks and months. He is the way for you too, and stands waiting to welcome you into life everlasting, just as he welcomed your dear Susan. So do not let your hearts be troubled, for you will be together again. Amen. We continue with an Easter hymn. And if you are able and you feel like standing up, please do as we sing. Redeemer lives in uh, communion with all of the saints, with Susan in heaven above, and um, with all of God's people gathered here. We confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the power of the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the music which you have set loose in the universe. We thank you for that song which Jesus himself came and sang and played among us. A song of love and grace, a song of victory and triumph, a song of joy. We thank you for the music that we experienced in Susan's life, in her love and in her gifts. We thank you that we heard Jesus' music through her. We thank you for the way that she touched our lives, for all the happy and good times that were shared by the family together and so many friends. We thank you for the hard times and for Susan's presence alongside and for your presence and your music in her. Help us, Lord, as we listen to, uh, to the bells, as we listen to, to the music sounding throughout the universe. Help us, Lord, to hear her and celebrate the love and the grace that we have received from her. We thank you that you, when her music could not go on any longer in this life, that you took her home to join the choir in heaven and to, um, to play the bells and continue the song of joy and peace, the song of Jesus. Join our life now, our music, our song, um, to hers and to yours. Help us to play that same um, tune and melody of love and grace that we were blessed with in her. Um, be with us, Lord, as we, as we go on to, to listen with, with peace in our hearts, comfort us in these days that are just so difficult. But use your music, the music of Jesus' song, of, of Susan's song, and of our song together as we continue to love and to serve and to sing and to reign in all of Jesus' love and grace. It's in his name that we pray for your peace and your comfort. And as we join together in praying the prayer that he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us then commend our sister Susan to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Sue. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a, lamp of your own, a lamb of your own flock, a, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with his favor, give you his peace now and always. Amen. There's a song that, uh, that sings of grace and love. Let's sing it together. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound.
John and the family would like to invite you now to, to meet them in the um, fellowship hall. Um, they'll go first because it's a large group here today. And they will meet you there and um, they look forward to sharing with you and continuing the conversation and continuing the music um, around some refreshments as well. Um, go in peace um, with joy and music in your heart. <laughs> 